Hey, boys and girls, this is Wild Man Will Say, and I'm doing a review of All in the New Japan and All H collaboration with the Bullet Club and everybody else, and also the NWA as well. So, I'm not going to go through all the matches one by one. I'm going to just give my thoughts in general of the whole show and some key points that I want to talk about during this show. Well, it was a pretty good show. I didn't like some of the stupidness and the comedy stuff that they had. I'm not really into watching the leak and some of the skits they do. So the whole Joey Ryan mess, I basically fast forward do that crap. I ain't even watched that. I enjoyed the match with Hangman and Joey Janela. That joint was a nice hardcore match. So, that was pretty cool. I just thought this stupidness with Joey Ryan didn't need to be added in there. I also enjoyed the um, full way with the ladies. That was a pretty good match. I think the ref or somebody messed up with the ending. But it was a pretty good match. Um, Tessa Blanchard, she's awesome in the ring. It was cool to see Magnum and her dad, Tully Blanchard, come down in the ring with her. That was cool to see. I thought the Cody and I still call him Magnus because that's what I'm used to calling them. Uh, match was it was. It was a good match. I like the ending, but for some reason, Cody was not landing with his punt kicks, super kicks, and it just didn't look like they wasn't hitting at all. And you can notice it. To me, the best match out of the night was the Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. match. I enjoyed that match. To me, that was the highlight of the night. The best match of the show, the Okada Versus um, Marty Squirrel match was pretty good too. And I was just, it was just a good clean match. I like it because Squirrel is actually acting like a villain and he actually tried to cheat at one point. I also enjoyed the Jay Lethal and Flip Gordon match. I seen Flip Gordon live at MCW a while back, so I always said he's a good wrestler, so. I enjoyed that match. Jay Lethal came out with the Macho Man joint with Leafy Leaping Lanny as, <laughs> as the second. That was cool to see. So I enjoyed that pretty much. I'm glad Jay Lethal kept the um ROH belt. So that was that was a good match. Oh no, this was a very um good pay per view. I know the people in attendance had a ball there and it looked like they was actually enjoying it and they wasn't bored. They wasn't doing what they usually do at a WWE pay-per-view where they just start taking over the show when it get too boring. At least they show respect to everybody in the ring. So that was a plus. So you don't see that too much in wrestling anymore. So. When you give the fans something that they looking forward to, you don't know, treat them like dummies, like this show, then that's what happens, even though I still don't like some of the comedy stuff. I don't get that, especially with the Joey Ryan stuff. It went pretty well. It kept on going match-wise, so it didn't waste no time with anything, for real, to be honest with you. Each match had their little stories. And told what was going on. I like, but you could also notice that the main event match, the um, Golden Elite versus Rey Mysterio, Bandito, and Rey Phoenix, you could tell that they was running out of time because they was rushing the hell out of that match. And it showed big time. So I don't know who went long or they didn't time out some of the matches right in the middle of the show. So. That kind of messed it up as well. So at the end, that you can just tell they was rushing big time. So I enjoyed it. 
it, it was nothing that was really bad off other than Cody missing some of his punches. I mean, not punches, some of his kicks. A cup, the super kick, and his um beautiful disaster kick did not kick Magnus in the face at all. For and you could see it because they didn't um the camera didn't cut to it where you couldn't tell that he had missed messed up on the kick. So that was a glaring problem to me in the match. But all in all, all in. Hopefully they'll do another one. But there's one match that I also must talk about before I stop is Stephen Amell versus Christopher Daniels. For somebody that only his only like his third or fourth match, wrestling Stephen Amell must have been practicing a lot because he actually was wrestling better than some of the people that's been wrestling for years now on some of the main shows, even TNA, RH, or WWE, and for somebody that's an actor and somebody that doesn't do it normally, he's very crisp in the ring. He knew what he was doing. He even did a coast to coast. So, I actually thought his match with Christopher Daniels was cleaner than some of the matches with in the show, surprise enough, even with the Cody and Magnus match for the um, NWA title, they was messing up a little bit. Them two, Daniels and Amel, was doing what they were supposed to be doing, and it didn't look bad off at all. So that was just surprising for me to see it as well. I also enjoy <laughs> that my man Chris Jericho came out of nowhere. You know, I knew about it beforehand, but still it was cool to see what he did. They keep on going after Kenny Omega. And also, the pimp, his bruise cruise that he's doing in October. Smart, smart move for everybody involved. This is a good look for independent wrestling. This is something we need because WWE then got so stale on Monday Night Raw. SmackDown is doing better, but they still need to work on the stuff that's going on raw. So hopefully more alternatives of wrestling in WWE will be better for the fans and better for wrestling in general. And it's just proved it. So we'll see what the Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes, and the Bullet Club will do. Even if they have another all-in or whatever else ventures that they're going to do down the road. We'll see. So, all in all, this was a pretty good pay-per-view. This is why, man, we're signing off. See you next time.